Hey, it's Tony, your VP Student Engagement at Kent Student Union. So, today marks a month on from the start of Varsity and the International Day for the Elimination of Racial Discrimination. And what a month it's been. This year, we revised our Varsity campaign to echo the sentiment of the student voice. Varsity is the biggest showcase event of the year, bringing both Kent and Christchurch together in competition. But this year's Varsity campaign brought us together in solidarity against racism, prejudice and discrimination of any kind with our REM students and beyond. So, you saw the armbands, you saw the banners, and I hope you've seen part one. But one thing I know you saw was us take the knee. But do you know why? Following on from student feedback, both Kent Students Union and Christchurch Students Union have decided we cannot stay silent any longer. Our committees are not representative of our societies and our societies are not representative of the wider student body and this must change to represent every student. By taking the knee, this was our visible form of showing solidarity, sending a clear message that racism has no place at our universities. We recognise the need to confront and dismantle racism and discrimination at every point within our own communities. We must actively listen to and amplify the voices of our REM students. We need to create spaces where they feel supported and empowered and hold ourselves and others accountable for challenging discriminatory attitudes and behaviours. Because we're all here for one thing, and that is the love of the game. So varsity might be over, but the conversation is not. Within my sport, I think it's difficult to bring up race because I think, not number one, not a lot of people can relate to how you feel. Um, so you, you're always trying to watch what you say so that you don't seem to touch a nerve um, to other people. However, when you're talking about your own experience, you shouldn't be fearful that you're touching a nerve of someone else um, because of something that someone else has done onto you. Um, and that you're fearful of someone else's reaction or response to it. However, it should be more of an open space where people can feel free to discuss things that they, that they have experienced. But I think it's because when you're on a team and, and there isn't a lot of people who are representative of who you are, um, you can often feel like you can't bring certain things up, you can't discuss it because you're, look, you're kind of looking around to see like, oh, people's reaction whether oh gosh that's maybe uncomfortable or oh I don't know how I've taken to that um, and so it's just about that kind of thing having an open dialogue because there's never you you feel like there's never a right thing to say so I feel as though in these spaces I don't feel like unless I'm talking to people who can relate to me um, about experiences I don't feel like I can speak to people about it. I um, feel very much comfortable very much comfortable to do that. Um, yeah, that's all I can really say. I'm, I'm very comfortable to talk about that. I think that I don't have an issue with talking about it, but I think sometimes the girls, because we're from very different backgrounds, I think sometimes I know that they wouldn't understand and maybe I wouldn't understand some of the things that they would tell me about the way that they've brought, been brought up. Um, so I think I could, but I don't necessarily tend to um, express myself a lot like there are certain things that like clearly are obvious like um, the base layer everything like that there are certain things like um, for example Ramadan so obviously I'll be training um, during fasting times um, which is something like you always get the questions like oh so you can't even drink water so what are you going to do about exercise so I mean that's just where like we don't our upbringings don't align um, but like I think I'm okay like navigating my own upbringing myself and like I think there are girls who would happily listen and accommodate and do everything that they can um, but I don't necessarily think that we align. A very, I mean again coming from Mauritius and where I've been uh, sort of 
any difference in ethnicity really wasn't you know, part of the question. There was such a variety and I think for me coming here, even though that there is quite a split, just from a numbers perspective, I feel very comfortable and... Do you often talk about race in your sport or about your teammates and things like that? In what context do you mean? Just in general or...? Uh, does it come up? <sighs> yeah, yeah it, it does, but it is more um, of the sense of how can we create more opportunities for people to recognise that the sport is open. And I think for a lot of people, especially, again, I don't know if that's purely from a racial side or just from people moving into university and it being a whole completely new aspect for them. I think it's just putting the name out there of that your sport is inclusive and that especially for us it's showing people that we have constantly lots of opportunities for people to join no matter what the level is and I think from a racial side why we say bring it up is again goes back to sort of the ratio and numbers there are just an entire university that that's the fact we can't you know beat around the bush here but I think it's making sure that even if there are a lack of numbers in certain cultures that they should still be open to come and join our, our society. And I think more from the social aspect than the sporting aspect will allow people to branch out and move past any sort of barrier or mindset towards the evident result is that there are you know, a lack of numbers in whatever cultures there are. I'm not 100% comfortable. Like I said before, like, I, f um, I don't feel like if I express, you know, um, you know um, how I'm thinking or feeling and, um, in relation to like my race or ethnicity to someone who's white, they can listen, but I know they don't understand and they don't have anything else to say to me. Um, they don't know how to sympathize or make me feel better in any way because, again, like they, they just don't get it. Um, so yeah, it, that's why I, I don't feel that comfortable. If it, again, if it was someone who, again, is from the same background as me, then yeah, 100%. But again, I play in a very white dominated sport. So if I were to join a team and, you know, things would happen or comments were made, I don't think I would really talk to anyone about it. Maybe family, but. No one on the team, really, I don't think. I think with sports and scholarships, I haven't really seen that many people of colour receiving scholarships. And so I don't know whether that's a thing of that, whether people don't know about it and that's why. But I think it's also a thing of there seems to be a difference in opportunity and whether it's that people do know about, about it, I'm not sure um, why that might be the case. However, I do feel as though having a look at those who have received scholarships, not many people of colour have received them. So, yeah, I would say there are some disparities, so like, like a question on basketball, so you don't really see much black people on horses, like doing the show jumping and stuff, but like basketball, you could, you would see, you would see black people there because that's what we've we've known. That's what we play. Don't get me wrong. Like, I think if if a black person is interested in doing something, they're gonna go and be like, oh, let me try this out. But then they might not feel like, oh, this is my place because they don't see their own people there. Meaning like they're not gonna be motivated or you know willing to do or participate more in that thing because there's not a lot of people they can you know, relate to in, in, the, in the sport, yeah. So I think there's definitely a difference in the opportunities that RAM students have. For example, um, like I said, netball's not diverse at UKC at all. Uh, when I look at like the most popular sports in Pakistan, India, like them sort of countries, it tends to be like cricket. So like I had to look at the Instagram page um, of UKC cricket and even then like I don't see anyone who looks like me and I don't know if that goes to maybe like socioeconomic opportunities or um, like feelings of alienation or people not seeing a role model 
should they want to get into that sport I don't know what it goes down to but I think it definitely does show that there is something wrong in terms of the difference in opportunities that we all have. I think that there's definitely things for non-REM students that there aren't for REM students like for example I think the diversity and inclusion officer would be super helpful um, for people like me and other people just getting into the society um, and I think that's just something that would really help if we did have it it would just be another layer of support that we don't have right now. I feel as though as I've gone through my years at uni um, as I've gone into committee positions because last year I was a captain of a team I think I do feel like sometimes I do feel like I am thought about but that's I feel as though sometimes people of colour like women can be like, pe women people like black women can be not considered in these types of spaces I found that sometimes like I've had to remind even little things that to other people can seem like smaller things um, but to me is a big thing um, such as hair. When we have comps and when we have varsity one thing that was never has never been really thought about um, is how people of colour would be affected in these types of conversations such as does this fit for everyone is this the type of look that everyone can wear that every, it would work for everybody because I often felt that I was forgotten about. Um, in my first year, we had been given these cuffs as a present and it was a really nice gesture. However, with the texture of my hair and how like I would want it to look, it wouldn't fit around my hair because of how thick my hair is. And so it kind of left me feeling like I stick out like a sore thumb because everyone's able to put their cuffs around their ponytails and stuff like that. Whereas if for me, I, wouldn't, I wasn't having a long ponytail, I was having a, a puff in my hair. And so it didn't really fit around and I had to just work with what I had. It was Velcro, which is also another thing. So I had to wrap it around as, as best as I could, just so I didn't stick out and make myself look any different to the team. Um, but that's the kind of conversation that I feel is, that needs to be had um, when deciding things. And um, what makes me really proud is when seeing girls wear their natural hair, because for me, especially last year in comp, I it was a thing of like, have your hair in a, in a high pony. And for me, I always thought like, oh, does that mean I need to straighten my hair to be able to do that? But for me, what I was proud of is the fact that I could wear my natural hair on comp floor and I could make it look as beautiful as I wanted it to look and not be ashamed and get comments from people saying how nice my hair looked and feeling appreciated and seen instead of having to conform and think for me to have beautiful hair. Because I think a thing for black girls specifically, there's always this type of like, there's always this thing of good hair and bad hair and bad hair has always been associated with coily kinky hair and our textured hair and good hair has always been considered straight hair and for me what made me proud was the fact that I could feel beautiful on comp floor and wear my hair how I wanted to wear my hair and it still look amazing and I still go out and perform as everyone else did so yeah. I don't think I've ever personally witnessed anyone not because I, th I think the question's asking me almost um, are the people getting the same opportunity so I don't think I've ever witnessed first first hand um, people miss out on opportunity due to um, who they are like what they look like in a sense but I know it happens and I've heard of it happening so I can say like I know someone who told me that x y and z like a uh, coach is saying this that and the other and that this certain type of person is better than this person at this, hence why they're playing this and you're not playing this. So kind of hearing those things I can say, yeah, but have I witnessed anything firsthand? No, but is there, is that um, something that actually does happen and does affect people? Yeah, but I can't say it happened to me personally, you know. I feel like REM students have to work significantly harder to get in sport just to get a leg up in compared to their peers. I feel like even after we do get onto the team, we consistently have to prove ourselves 
as being good with our skills just to remain like at the top unlike some of our peers who have significantly lesser skills than us. So you feel like you don't want to be perceived as aggressive or you don't want to be perceived as a certain type of way because that's the thing. I feel as though sometimes I'm having to hold my tongue because I don't, I get scared that if I say something wrong, if I say something, I'm going to be painted a type of way that's aggressive, that's a bully. Even if someone else who looked like, who didn't, doesn't look like me said something, the same thing, there's it's just, they're authoritative, they're doing their role, they're doing whatever. Whereas when it comes to me, it's like, oh no, you can't. So I feel like you have things to say, so say it. No, definitely not. Um, and I'm not just saying that for the sake of it, for the cameras and stuff. I do feel there's always been an equal opportunity for all. Again, going back to our last discussion, I don't... You'd probably have to speak to somebody in another racial background to see if they have a completely different answer. But as a whole, from the clubs and societies I've been in, de definitely not. It's an equal opportunities um, basis, yeah. In comparison to back home, I would say the language barrier sort of instead of say from a racial or cultural difference is a big one. I think that would also only be say the one outlier for some students here if English wasn't their first language and just breaking in and sort of bringing in their perspective on things and making a stance might be a lot harder speaking a second language and I know that from experience. So I think and also again goes back to what we said at the start was the financial side of things. I think that's a massive barrier, and especially, especially for students coming abroad, who are already a financial aspect of everything around university is a bit of a struggle. To have an extra barrier when it comes to sport. So I think that's a struggle and why people divert from those, you know, higher echelon sort of sports and will drift towards, say, something like football or basketball, where it's a lot easier to just engage and join up. Not saying that you'd get rid of basketball, but just yeah. like if you had the means to, so like if you had the financial backing to try out different sports, would you, particularly elite sports? Oh, I probably would. I've always wanted to play like, golf, you know? Because I, I, it's just, I've watched the, all the greats do it. They just play golf. Michael Jordan, he just plays golf. Must be a nice life. Yeah, um, I guess in regards to opportunities, um, I mean, the most I can say about that is that when I was living in Asia, like, there was nothing. I had to join a boys team because there was no pathway for girls to develop in football. Um, and in regards to at Kent, I mean, yeah, again, there are opportunities and um, there is support, but you, it doesn't feel like fully supported. I don't know how to explain it. Like it's, it's like I could go and join a club, a team, whatever. But again, I will feel so out of place because there just isn't any consideration for how difficult it is for, um, you know, REM students to just jump into again a white-dominated sport. Like it's just not a thought that crosses anyone's mind, unfortunately. Um, so yeah, there are opportunities, but they're not the most comfortable opportunities, I would say. Uh, I feel like the sports team at Kent don't accurately depict the demographic at Kent. I feel like you find this out through when you go to like society nights you can just see what people are signed up for the sports society that's like an all telling even me I kind of stopped going mainly because I would be the only minority in the room and it was although I'm used to it I just don't like being in a place where like I am uncomfortable being the only person there I find myself in a position where I always have to count to see how many ethnic people are in the room with me and more times than one, I find it's just myself, which is kind of unnerving. Mm, good question, good question. I would say, I would say it could be better. I would say it could be better because everything could be better because like in rugby, you know, I'm always going to go back to rugby because that's what I'm playing. But, three people come on out of like 30, 40 people. 
it's, it could be better. We could we could say more. We could do more. Yeah. Um, I don't think the sports teams reflect the demographic of people of colour students that we have at like at Kent. Um, I think a lot more could be done, um, and that can be on behalf of Kent Uni, and that can be on behalf of the club. I don't think there has been enough done to push for more people of colour joining societies or joining student groups. Um, but I think there's always room for improvement. As, like I've said, that's why it's important for representation in committees. It's important for like people of colour to put themselves out in these spaces to know that there are people like you that are, that are in these societies. So I think it's about us ourselves making student groups our own as well as um, taking into consideration that other people might not know that there are people like you in your society and so I think it's about outreaching and speaking to a wider community even outreaching to other societies um, like even ACS or UKC Nigerian society um, getting them more involved and having different ways to speak to them um, about different things and giving them opportunities to even try the sport so yeah because like even for my first year that's one thing I'm like glad because I think on my team in my first year there was only three black girls on the team and we were all like okay we're all here together and it just kind of felt like we had each other because sometimes you do feel like like I know I don't blend in and that's why I answered the question and say I don't I didn't join it to blend in because I didn't but it's also a thing of like having people and people like you and feeling seen by those people and being supported because there's a different way like even when we do do our team talks in my first year everyone used to think I was a crazy person because I'd get really hyped up and that's my personality like I'd be loud I'd be boisterous whereas like people like other black girls would be looking at me like Exactly, like they'd, be, they'd know what I'm talking about, but to other people they'd be so amazed by me just being like my bubbly personality and it coming across completely different to everyone else. Everyone would be confused, looking around like, is she, is she okay? Whereas I'm like getting everyone riled up in the best way that I know how to. Because that's all, for me, that's always been a thing. When I was in sixth form, I was in a group of girls and it was like a massive group of black girls and we would laugh, we, the way we'd laugh, like we'd love it. Like we'd be so, when we were together, we were so energetic, we were so happy, but then we'd always have that neg negative connotation to us being like the loud ones, like, or like black girls are too loud or this, that and the other. And for me, I always thought, I always thought when I come to like my, like these spaces, like I've got to be quite tame, I've got to be quite quiet and I've got to kind of control myself. But that's just not me. And for me, I'm not gonna sit there and I'm not gonna stop being myself. Like, I will be boisterous. I will be as loud as I wanna be. And no one can tell me nothing about it because that's just who I am. And I, I'm not gonna change that for anybody. And so for me, that's one thing that I wanted to bring to being president. People might say that I'm not, I have had people say to me that I'm not the usual type of president. And you know what, I'm glad that people don't think I am the usual type of president because I want to be different. I want to be the type of person that people can come to. I want people to see my true personality. I don't want to be dialing my personality down, dialing who I am down for anybody else. So I'm glad to do that. No, I don't. But do I think that's on anyone in particular? No. I think it's just people's choice, like, you know, my friend said. I think, I think it's people will do what they want to do kind of thing. People are going to choose the sport that they are more inclined to play, just like the way I am. Um, would I want more? 100% I want more people of my kind to be coming and playing the sport and actually realising how you can develop and how good you could become at the sport. Mm, I don't think they represent the demographic at all. I mean if you look at like all, well, a majority of the sports teams, again it's all English players um, and when you walk around campus, you see such a difference in um, like cultures, ethnicities and everything. I would say probably from the top of my head, women's football, 
tennis and like dance are like the only societies I've seen that have represented that diversity that we have on campus and it's great to see but the fact that I can only name three of them just shows that there's a lack of um, again opening up that conversation welcoming people making sure they feel comfortable here to play the sport that they want to play um, yeah and I feel like they societies need to start doing more to you know show that um, they believe in equality in sport um, and they're there to support you to play and pursue the sport you want to do you know I definitely don't think that sport societies that we have today accurately represent the student demographic at Kent as a whole and um, for example the Punjabi society that um, I'm part of like you see so many girls and guys who like are interested in doing sport like I'm starting a netball team and a football team and loads of people are jumping at the opportunity and I say to them why don't you like try out for bucks or even just play it socially um, and then they're just completely not keen on that idea so I think there's definitely so many people that look like me that want to get into sport but for some reason don't and I think that's down to the university and how they advertise the societies and the committees and I think they need to take responsibility for getting more people in that are REM students. So like I said about how religion and netball don't necessarily align, um, I think that's definitely telling a little bit of why there aren't more Muslim girls in the society. For example, the Islamic Society um, at UKC, like a lot of them are hijabis. Um, and I can imagine that the whole idea, when you just look at a Bucks game and then you see like your role models or the people that you're aspiring to be and look like are girls who like they don't wear leggings or they don't wear base layers or they're just wearing their dresses and I think it's just not what it's not something we can ever look like or aspire to look like and I think that might be a turn off for why someone like us wouldn't want to get into the sport in the first place. Um, I think when looking at like what kind of the culture of sports society is I think it isn't a lot of people of colour don't tend to go on, I'd say, like a sports night out because the music isn't what we te like tend to listen to um, and it's not something within the cu our culture or particular, I can't speak to everyone's experience, but for a lot of people it's not part of their culture. And then when you think about the Wednesday socials and how they are super fun like I've been and like I forced myself to go to get more involved and they are really lovely in terms of bonding with everyone but you do need to remember that the whole purpose of it is to pre and to get drunk for Wednesday even if you're not going out people do go there to drink and socialise and I think that's not something that would appeal to girls like me either um, and even maybe just like having a few sober socials where like no one's drinking or um, I don't know, I just think that the way that netball and other sports society is now, the way the drinking culture is at uni, the way people dress, um, it's just not inviting to girls like me so I understand it would be hard to break that barrier. It's, it's, it's almost um unconscious yeah like, the whole drinking culture i think that's just what sport is but it's not their fault because that's the way that they've been brought up exactly. it's just not the way that i've been brought up exactly. so like my mum said to me she's like like i'm not going to allow you to pick one over the other yeah. but remember when you're mixing it it's not going to work and it doesn't work it's true like i can't mix like I can't do, like I don't go to socials anymore because I can't mix it. Like I can go to my games looking like this, but I can't turn up in a room where everyone's drinking, getting ready to go out. I can't mix my religion with that. So like, there's certain things that like you can't do, which took me a while to realise. Because <laughs> I tried to brush your face, but it doesn't work. Um, yeah. But I'm hoping that through me playing that ball and through 
people coming to CSR games that they see me and I do stick out like a sore thumb and they think, oh, if she can do it, then why can't I? Sport at, with sport at Kent, my expectations would be that there would be more REM students involved. I had, a, I was hoping that there would be more REM students, especially since during the tryouts, there were quite a few of us, but in reality, there was like significantly less than us. I have like no experience with other universities, but I feel within Kent, it's quite hard to see other people like you doing the same sport. And when they do, it's quite clicky. So you're kind of just like all grouped together on your own. Um, my experience with school and university with REM students in sport is quite different. Although I went to like a predominantly white school, we did have quite a large range of REM students there. So it wasn't as unnerving, but here at Kent, it's very rare to see a lot of people who look like me doing the same sport. Whereas back at school, there was quite a few of us there. And how does that make you feel? Uh, can't lie. I think I'm so used to it, it doesn't really make me feel any type of way. way. Like sometimes I'll just say, oh, there's just like less of us, but like I've been so used to it like over the years, like it doesn't phase me that much anymore. Secondary sixth form, I was in London in, in North West, which is, you know, it's kind of diverse. You see every, any, every people, you know, different races, anything. Um, I'm, you know, I'm kind of um, definitely uh, used to that. Uh, coming in here, you know, is it's definitely not as diverse as, you know, London. Like I said before, like my peers, before I came to Christchurch, there was a number of black students or like black players in my in my team, which was like, which was good, which was like, it made me feel more, I, I won't say more like welcoming, but it, it made me, like talk to people like people I could resonate with kind of yeah but, like coming to Christchurch obviously you see in the numbers as well wasn't I wouldn't say it was disheartening but it was just like well it was I can't I wasn't expected it but it was like I've seen it before so it's not it wasn't new to me you know so yeah you know. um I have because I haven't done shit anywhere else before um my expectations are worse slightly different. I think it depends on the team you're on. For game days, if you look at like American style game days, there are like different chants that you see um, people do in America. You see a lot of like black girl teams in America that do like such amazing dances that do a lot, you know, that represent their personality, represent who they are. And I feel like what I want to do and what I will, will advise next year is that we use some of that colour, that personality, and we put that into our varsity squad, our game day team. Um, as well as like, even at comps, I think going to competitions last year competing, um, when you look out at comp floor, it the it's not diverse at all. Whereas like, in a way, I kind of felt proud that there were people of colour in Kentshire, um, because when you look out on comp floor, um, at like nationals, there aren't many people that look like you there. And so I think it's important that even everywhere, university sport is more inclusive and diverse. Um, however, looking back at it last year, it, made, it actually made me quite proud with the amount of diversity that we did have on some of the teams last year. So I'm from Oxford, so a predominantly white, posh, stereotypically, um, area. Growing up in school, like I said, the level of netball is super different to the level of netball that it is now. For example, we used to play on outdoor tennis courts where the floors were rubbish and everyone was slipping. But because it was super cold and we tend to play netball in winter, um, everyone was wearing bracelets, everyone was wrapping up warm, trying to wear their hoodies. Um, so I never ever felt like alienated or different because I looked the same bar skin colour than everyone else there. So that was never an issue. Um, 
And then the big hit was the university when obviously we only play indoors. Um, but obviously I've kept my base layer on, other girls haven't, which does make me stick out. Um, which does make it hard, for sure. Um, but I think that's just realising where netball gets harder um, as you grow older and as it gets more serious, as your level gets higher. Um, I think the opportunities or like how easy it is to get into the sport definitely decreases. When I was younger, I wanted to be a professional netballer, I wanted to play for England, I wanted to do all of that. Um, when I got to uni and then it started getting a lot more serious um, and I started thinking about it on a deeper level and whether that's really what I wanted to do. Um, not seeing anybody like uni kind of hindered me a little bit because if I don't even see anyone at this level when we're nowhere near England level, how can I expect to make it through all the way? And then like you think about things like, oh, if I get to like national level, I'm on TV and then I'm still wearing a base layer and I'm still wearing my leggings under my dress. And like for me now, I don't think it's a reachable goal, which is quite sad because I was really set on it. But um, I think it's just something that I've accepted and I think it's not going to change unless I do see more people like me on TV or even I think it needs to start at uni netball for it to even reach TV level. Um, so I think that's definitely coming to uni changed my perspective on netball a lot um, in terms of who makes it to the top and who doesn't. Look again from my perspective and my story coming from Mauritius the variety that we had you can't compare especially here in the UK it's just out of the equation. Um, I think my expectations in particular, <sighs> very low to be honest, because again, I knew coming from where I was, there would be a massive shift. And I think it, less of the racial side and more of a class system, that was definitely something that I had to sort of, you know, premeditate and sort of gauge when I moved here. So I guess for me, it made it a bit easier being, you know, white, and you just already from the get-go, there's just, you know, more white people than not. And again, it's slightly contradictory to what we've been saying before. And again, goes back to, I can't give a perspective from somebody who's black, brown, or not anything that's not white, and how they would feel coming into a system. Um, I just know coming from a background where white was, I wouldn't say a minority, but there was less of my ethnicity. And then coming here where it shifted completely reverse, um, I didn't feel like I felt better or that it was a better environment. It's just a, from a more cultural side of things, you, see, you seem to fit in. I think that might be from more of a personal side of having an English background, family-wise, just made it easier and less of a racial thing. But I didn't feel that I was put on a higher pedestal compared to somebody else from an REM background. It was just the way you see things. You gravitate to what's, you know, culturally similar to what you've had. I, I knew I was um, going to an English university. I knew the football team was just going to be English, white girls. Um, but it didn't, it didn't stop me from coming here. I mean, obviously, I told you, like, I knew the student body itself was um, quite diverse. Um, so at least I had that. And then I would just have to spend three hours a week dealing with the fact that I'm the odd one out, um, but for the sake of like my of being comfortable at this uni, like it was worth it to me. And um, looking at the other unis, like I was thinking of going to, again, this one was for me the safest place I I would feel to be at. Um, and I'm so glad because then I I played those teams that I maybe would have gone to, um, mm -hmm. like during Bucks fixtures, and. And compared to our team today, it's just, it's nothing like that. Like, it's just all English white girls, you know, and um, yeah, I'm glad, I mean, it, and it's not represented in the societies, but at least in the student body, like, I can feel comfortable and it represented. Um. Like, where did you get your picture of what the football team should look like before coming to university? Um, honestly, the university websites or the, Instagram pages like I checked out the 
UKC WFC Instagram. It was just no one who looked like me on there. Um, I, I applied for my scholarship program. Again, looked at who was under it. No one who looked like me or different to a typical English person. Um, and yeah, just any ad, like promotion or advertising I saw for Kent, again, was very much focused on representing, I guess, again, like the local people rather than the, interna the influx of international students that they do get. I feel the university could make a step to try and include all the REM international societies for one, like let them know about the opportunities they have in sport and to join. That would give them more of an, like, that would kind of like push them to apply to join the sports more. And if they see like their friends or people who look like them are also going to be joining that sport, it will make them feel like they have a place to belong and not feel so scared to join, which is what some of us feel when we try and join a sport. I think it's taking the same approach as the sports teams have, but prioritise that instead of sports, it being um, countries or social backgrounds. And I think creating those almost fresh affair sort of style of creating these other societies from particular backgrounds and emphasising the importance of that on the same levels we do with the sport. And I think people will join the sports through the societies of their own ethnicity or backgrounds. And I think f being more familiar with people from, you know, quite similar to you, just makes life a lot easier for you to take on other challenges or even join other committees which are completely out of your comfort zone. I think having the backing from your own society and feeling a bit more inclusive in that sense. Because I think having these societies, if we make it as important as sports, I think for new REM students, it'll just make it easier for them to, you know, feel a bit more at home. Because even though, again, being a white person, but coming from abroad, knowing that there are other people in a similar boat as you, whether that's again culturally or racially, it makes life so much easier to sort of, you know, join other communities. Yeah. I'll just say like, pe pe I don't know, like people will do, like I keep saying this, will do what they want to do. You can't really like force other people to go play their, that sport or go play, because there's a reason they're not, they're, if it's not race, there's another reason why they're not getting involved, you know, so I want to say like, we have to do more because we are putting it out there, we are doing things like this, telling our stories and stuff. So I think, I think we're doing quite well right now. I think what's difficult is to enforce something like, because I think some places enforce like, like even like jobs they enforce quotas. And I think one thing that people always say is, oh, that it takes away from giving someone a place um, because of their skill. However, I do feel like it is important that societies are held accountable in some regard, in that when they don't have enough of a diversity and it's not reflective enough, I feel as though they should be kind of called out for it and it should be recognised because I do think it's a thing of like, people should, there should be more outreach and when you're looking at people, I do feel as though, even at Freshers Fair, you're always looking for people who can relate to you, that you, you're feeling more comfortable to walk up to and speak to. However, I do feel as though, because there aren't a lot of people, of people of colour in committees, when on Freshers Fair, you do see a lot of, like you walk on the strip on the plaza and you look around and you're like, oh, I'm thinking of joining this one, but how many people do represent me? Or am I gonna have people who I connect with on that level that I can speak about um, or speak to um, and I feel as though even on committees there should be more of an emphasis of people of colour going for roles on committees and so that's what I think Kent Union can do, um, encourage more people to be on committees, encourage more people to be representatives in sport. I think the only thing I can say for them to improve diversity is trying to give equal opportunity everywhere, whether that be through, like I said earlier, schooling, 
as in making sure that everyone has equal resources, playing fields, posts, balls, etc. Like, if everyone has equal opportunity, now everyone has um, equal outcome in a sense of if they choose to go down that route, they'll almost have equal outcome to the people. Rather than it just being on like, oh, if you pay to go here, then there's all these pictures, you're going to be able to enjoy that sport, learn that sport. Whereas if you go to this lower class place, then you really, all they do is football. So all I can say is level the playing field and make sure everyone has the resources to let people like tap in and hone to what, you know, they find to be their favorite sport. People need to understand how much class plays a factor into what you then pursue like uh, later within your, within your life or whatever. And, you know, what I mean by that is being in a lower class, you're gonna go for what is not necessarily considered lower class sports, because I don't think something like football is considered a lower class sport, but football is accessible to everyone, hence why the lower class and the higher class play it. But what I found within rugby is that, especially through the schooling that I've had, which I I'm, think I'm fortunate in a sense to have had, but it's opened my eyes to the different levels of just, just how much access people have to things like just Sport is just one, but there's more than sport. But tees and kits and clubs, it's expensive. And f maybe finding a sense, like I've been repeating throughout this whole thing, finding a sense to where we can make equal outcome and equal playing field for everyone to be able to indulge in everything that they want to do and have a go at everything they want to do, not because of what they can afford to do. There definitely needs to be more like emphasis on getting run people and not necessarily like just getting loads of girls in and getting as many to sign up, like specifically getting REM people to sign up and to try and who knows, they might make it to Barks and then we will see representation. I don't think it's as easy to say, oh, um, we'll put out an initiative where we only want Punjabi girls to come to this and um, we're just going to see their level. I don't think it's, I don't think you can do that as a uni and I don't think you should do that as a uni, but making videos like this for Varsity, hopefully, Punjabi girls and other REM students will see it and they'll be like, oh look, she's playing at varsity, she's inviting people like her, people like me to come and play like in the next academic year. So I think initiatives like this are really, really good. And I don't think it's easy enough to just say, okay, we want this group of people to come play. I think you do need to put emphasis on this group, but you need to do it in a way that, like a way like this, a way where we see the role models and then we aspire to be like the role models, not simply saying, okay, we want you. I think, for example, last year campaigning for Varsity, like it was simply like pictures, like you could see who was playing, like the captains of each society or whatever, like you could see who was playing, like where they would be, what time, all of that stuff. Having a video like this, where you could actually hear people like me and other REM students, you can hear the story and you can hear why we want more REM students, why there should be more REM students. It's not just a picture of me where you can just see me and brush it off after and forget about it. I want you to hear my story and I want you to get into sport and to break down that barrier that you've been keeping up and to make that first step. This as a whole, the whole interviewing process, wanting to understand people's stories as well as share them so that other people can view them and maybe even take away something from it to then do something with it themselves. I think that's very good. And like you said, I think we're on a very good path and I feel like every action that people are taking now is only, you know, gonna do better for other people. Yeah, 100%. I guess stuff like this, you know, just, again, you, you like I said before, you need to create a space and an environment where people feel safe and they can talk about whatever it is they're feeling because of what they're going through and I think that just needs to be shown more visually around the university so like you said you guys are doing banners and everything like I think that's a really great idea um, because then when I don't know a fresher like me sorry not a fresher a first year <laughs> like me is walking through campus and they can see I don't know my face or someone else's face um, that isn't just again another English person like they can feel like, oh wow, like I'm seen, I'm here, you know, um, there are other students here just like me. Um, and yeah, I think it should be the same for the sports programs. 
like just again the fact that I went to um, apply for a scholarship and everything and I just immediately knew I was going to be the odd one out when I joined the program. Um, I think that just needs to change. Promotion and advertising needs to be, again, more inclusive um, of just everyone who is at this uni, not just the English home fee students, you know. And I think the way that uh, Farsi in particular has been promoted all year round, I think just showcases that there is no prejudice, there is no um, sort of lack of opportunity, unless it is from, you know, a financial side of things. So I think what you see at the end of the day, especially focusing on Varsity Week, is the build-up all year round. Is It is the best squads per team. It's nothing to do with racial sides, cultural sides. And you can see then the results of the games. You can see high intensity, high quality. I feel like these actions are important, but it depends on the individual. See, for me personally, I'd rather someone take the knee if they genuinely want to rather than force them to take the knee and they don't believe in that I'd rather we all stand in solidarity if that's what you genuinely feel and I feel like marketing shouldn't be used as a way to showcase this if it's not genuine. I think these actions are important I think it's important that there is that recognition that there is a problem within sport and that people are impacted I think it would be great, these ideas would be great. Um, however, I also would want to emphasise, I'm hoping that people would do it for the right reasons. And it wouldn't be just a thing of that people do it out of just a token and they forget it later. However, I want these kind of conversations to be like rehad, people to keep talking about it, people to keep thinking about, oh, remember when we did this, or remember when we did that, that showed solidarity and it bring more people closer together. I absolutely think students should do actions such as taking the knee or wearing the band around their arms before a game, during a game. Um, I went to a netball game um, in London and they did it and it made me feel so uh, empowered. I think it just, you know, reiterates that we want to make sure that we're all on the same page on this and that at the end of the day, even though that there's a lot of people out there who we really just don't care about any prejudices or any, you know, any, create any unnecessary barriers. Sadly, it's still out there and we could be ignorant about it, especially, you know, being a white person and, you know, not having any of that for, you know, your whole life, to be honest. I think it's just showing that this, you know, problem still exists. And I think it's as long as we're all on the same page from all different backgrounds and that we all take the stance, and it's not just the people who haven't been a victim of any of it who decide to feel that they do need to take a stance. I, th I think it's more of a right to be there on the same page first and then I think that's the whole purpose of taking the knee, in my opinion. I think the visual displays of, of solidarity would make me feel proud. I think I would feel walking out and looking and seeing people actively taking a stance and kind of being more like open to understanding um, how it does play a role into how people feel and um, how people have been treated. And it kind of makes people feel seen and recognises that there is a problem rather than trying to like hide it and sugarcoat it, that it's out there for everyone to see and everyone to kind of just understand that there needs to be a change and that as clubs, as presidents, we should all try and make an active effort in implementing things to make things more diverse, make people want to join our clubs, our societies. And it would also create a sense of unity if a lot of clubs are doing it all together. It's one thing that can, because all, all societies wear different kind of kits and everything, whereas like having one thing that represents all teams, represents everyone, I think that would be beneficial and really unify Kent Sport. But for me personally, it wouldn't make a difference whether you do take the knee or whether you don't take the knee. It's about the way you're acting off field and on the field, etc. that matters to me rather than you just taking the knee. Because you can take the knee and then, you know, go call me some racial slur on the pitch. Like, but you just sat down the it. So, so you see why it can just lose its meaning just like that. Hence why those things don't matter so much to me, like a physical action of you doing this. It doesn't matter to me. How would I feel about it? 
I would feel great, <laughs> honestly. Um, I think it's gonna, like, I know it's, it's gonna mean the world to me. It's gonna mean the world to a lot of other students. Um, because it's just, even though it's like, you know, 10 seconds of us taking the knee or me just wearing an armband during the match, it is saying so much more than that, in my opinion. It's like, if I was on the sideline watching the match and I see that one love armband, I feel seen, I feel heard, I feel represented. Like, people will let me be here and accept me, you know? Um, which I've never had before when playing football. Are you likely to continue sport outside of university once you graduate? Yeah, of course. Like, um, I don't think I'm going to stop playing sports because that's what I like to do, you know? Like, that's my way of, like, blocking out the world. Like, oh, yeah, I've done this enough for today. Let me go play some sport. Let me, let me release some stress, you know? So, yeah, I'll continue. But I wouldn't say because of my university experience, just because that's who I am and that's what I like doing. So, yeah. I think... I've always thought about joining cheer outside of uni. Um, I hope that I do do it. I hope that I can look back in this video and say like, that's one thing I like looked into. However, I think after, I think going home and being back in the same environment that I was in um, and being near the clubs that didn't really want anything to do with me prior to, I think it had impacted me and I think the only th reason why I thought about joining uni cheer was because there is, I do feel like there is a different sense of more inclusivity in university cheer than external and that's not to say that other clubs, other teams elsewhere don't push for that, don't encourage that, it's just from my personal experience it's not something that I've previously seen and um, what I'm hoping for is that I can be proved wrong and that I go back and I put myself out there and then I feel like I can be around people that I relate to um, but as of now I think I've really enjoyed being part of a uni sports team. I think with my journey at university there's definitely been a lot of ups and downs with playing netball but ultimately um, like I wouldn't change it for the world like the girls in netball have been so welcoming um, and so encouraging at times when I didn't feel like I deserved to be on the team, whether that was because of the way that I looked or just if I was having a bad day playing, they always reassured me. Um, it's always been somewhere where like, I could go, I could feel happy. Um, so I definitely will continue netball after this, but it's easier for me to say that because I've been playing my whole life um, and I don't think it's as easy for someone else to say that who hasn't had netball in their life or doesn't have people around them who share the same love for the sport, who don't look like them, I don't think it's as easy for them to say that. So whilst I will continue, other REM students may not. Uh, it has influenced my decision to not continue on with this chosen sport outside, mainly due to being a minority. I have now been focusing more on going to gym sessions and sports sessions that are catered to REM students only and just REM adults in general which I can find all over London which I feel is a more inclusive environment for me where I don't feel scared or nervous but rather like glad to be in the presence of my people. I don't think my uni experience will have, it will play a part like it will because you know I continued it here so why not continue to continue. That's what I can say on the uni behalf, but because of the past I've had and the history that I've had with the sport itself, the journey I've had along the way, the ups and downs, etc., just the thrill of the sport, that was what will kind of keep me playing into men's, etc., for, for a good while while my body can. I'll be playing it for as long as possible, really, just trying to have fun out of it, stay fit out of it, meet good people out of it. Um, yeah, 100%. It would be past experiences, but uni definitely will contribute to that because it's meeting again people. So I, that promotes me to then continue to go and meet more people through the sport. So yeah, 100% I'll carry on and uni's played a good part to that.
Like, I mean, if anything, it's going to enhance it. I think being from, I guess, from a REM background, being part of Varsity, I reckon, aside from the other box tournaments and sport throughout the year, seeing that take place and the passion that it brings from everybody together, I think it just shows to why we play the game at the start. And I think moving out of this environment to replicate that enthusiasm and that sort of build up and sense of community will be very hard to find outside of university. For me, it'll just, you know, increase my want to play sport and, you know, improve whatever society I join, I guess, because that's been the focal point is the societies and committees that we've built up, no matter what background. So yeah, for me, that'll be you know, the, the main drive to follow through with it. Honestly, I think it has uh, pushed me to just keep going with football and pursue it. Because although, again, like I've been saying all these lows of being an REM student, it's taught me like determination, composure, confidence. And again, like although I'm, I may not be seen or heard, it, at the end of the day, like I said, it is football. I am there to play football, to perform, to do what I love. Um, and if anything, my experience at uni has just made me more resilient than, I, than um, how I was in my first year. Um, and it's really taught me that I should be embracing my uniqueness, using that as, as um, energy on the pitch. Um, and yeah, just play football because I love football. Like nothing else is going to stop me now. Like I feel more confident in just doing whatever it is I want to do now. Um, yeah. Thank you so much for watching. But these are just eight stories and eight students. There are so many more. These stories teach us that our room students have something to say. They've spoken about their feelings of talking about race, the feelings of alienation they experience, and the fact that our race and our identity is something far beyond politics. There is absolutely no reason why our REM students should not get the same opportunities as our non-REM students. It's 2024. Wake up. We need to say more and do more. My main takeaway was the clear disparities in the experience between the men and the women in this video. This opens further conversations wider than race, conversations around class, gender, religion and intersectionality. To all REM students at Ken and Christchurch, we see you, we hear you and we stand with you. Your experiences are valid, your voices are powerful and your presence enriches our community. To all students, let us continue to confront racism and misogyny head on within ourselves and within our communities. Let us commit to creating an inclusive and equitable environment where every individual can thrive and flourish. I hope this campaign gives you something to reflect on. This isn't a Canterbury issue. This is a national issue.